rather than watching a long video during an install of where the sensors go for your Viking view, here's your shorty. Uh, right on top of the gearbox here is where you're going to install the gearbox temperature probe. So you get it out of the box, put a little bit of Teflon sealer on there, remove the plug and screw that in, and then uh, hook up the connectors and route them to the instrument. As far as cooling, it's right next door. It's right here. This plug here, this plug is sometimes hard to get to and it might be just less work to take this screw out and this screw out and pull this cover off. Then install another one of these in this port and then use the right stuff sealer and uh, put the cover back on. These small screws on the engine are about 110 inch pounds. That takes care of your temperature issues. Now let's move in for pressure. On the back of the engine, on the Viking 130 we're doing today, there's a fitting right there, an angled brass fitting. Make sure you don't rotate this other fitting that's, that it is attached to, because it has a ceiling washer and you don't want that to back out. But you can remove this plug here, the brass one, and screw your pressure transducer in there there's one for oil and one for fuel, they're identical. And then you plug your, your connector in and route it to the instrument. There's another one of these pressure tra transducers that go in the back of the airplane on the Zenith, for instance. And it is for fuel pressure. And it goes in that aluminum block where your check valves and so forth are in. That block, by the way, all the holes are the same. They all lead to the same place. So it doesn't matter which hole you use for what. Um, and some people even rearrange that block carefully looking at our diagram in order to get fittings and pressure transducers and so forth pointed in the proper direction of what's best for their installation. Pay attention to the newer Viking views. They do have for the pressure transducers uh, two different lengths of cables that are supplied. Of course, you use the long one to go in the back of the airplane and the short one for the front. Excess cabling should not be shortened and just coil it up. The way we do our trays in the airplanes now, you can coil it up and tie it underneath your tray um, between, the fire, between the instrument panel and the firewall. That way you don't have as much cable on top where you want it to look nice and organized and uh, so forth. Have fun.